We have heard the story over and over and over and over and over again. We still like that the team fights to the end. We still like that the team competes. We still like the signs that we see when they do. But we got to start asking the question. When is one of those nice 30 minutes, nice 24 minutes, going to become 48? It's time to have a reckoning on progress today on Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is February 15th, 2022. My name is Philip Ross and I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked on Magic, the Magic again, give it the old college try. They look really good for long stretches of this game, but unfortunately build themselves too deep a hole to climb out of. We'll talk about how the Magic need to actually measure some progress, where the Magic actually need to make some progress by the end of the year, and why, frankly, the same old reasoning, the same old thing, it, it, it may not be enough anymore. We'll get to that. We'll talk about some lineup changes. We'll talk about some lineup experimenting going on, as well as go through the final box score from Monday's game. But before we do that, I do want to appreciate. I want to do thank. I want to appreciate and thank you all for making Lockdown Magic part of your day every day. No matter when you listen to us, whether it's the first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, whether you're listening to back uh, back episode back episodes like our mega trade deadline pod from Friday from Thursday night Friday morning, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a lot of great Locked On podcasts out there, so thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day. For all the latest, check out the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Jamal Mosley opened his press conference following the Magic's 121 to a 111 loss to the Denver Nuggets, um, seemingly holding back tears. Just, just felt like he was beaming with pride um, for the performance that his team put on. Um, yes, they lost by 10, but it was a Herculean effort in many ways. The team scored only 40 points in the first half and scored 41 in the fourth quarter. They were down by 20 points early in the fourth and rallied to really make Denver sweat. If a few shots had gone in, maybe things would have been different. It is a familiar story for the Orlando Magic. They have talked a lot about their resiliency, about how they fight back. And, you know, again, we talked about it maybe last weekend when the Magic lost to um, Boston and Memphis. It was the first time all year where it didn't feel like they competed well. The Magic competed well. The Magic played hard. The Magic tried to get after it. Now, were they effective? Were they efficient? No, but they got after it. And for a rebuilding team, maybe that is enough. Maybe that is enough to say, okay, this was a success. And and, and the fourth quarter especially, the Magic looked like the team that I think all of us envisioned, harassing defensively on at breakneck speed, running on the attack, always on the attack, always aggressive, never really slowing down and just going. It's a lot of fun to watch. I'm not going to lie. Um, this team, you know, again, the big picture, this team has a lot of potential that has yet to come together. And so as we move into the final quarter of the season, as we move into the post-All-Star break part of the season, which again, one of the easier schedules in the league after the All-Star break. So don't be surprised if Magic do fall off the pace for the reverse, reverse standings and the lottery standings here. As the Magic move into this final um final stage of the season. The Magic do need to start showing progress, and they do need to start showing progress in one particular area. As proud as Jamal Mosley was, and he has every right to be proud, and there's a lot to be proud of in those closing moments, as proud as he was, I have to say we've heard this story before. And while certainly the team's record, the game results, are not how we are judging this team, and not ultimately what's going to matter. Results are going to matter eventually. This is a win-loss business. This is a zero-sum business. There is a winner and a loser in every game and nothing in between. 
And while this season is not about the wins and losses, this season is not about the team's record, at some point, it's going to be. And so we want to see the team make strides and take steps toward becoming that team. And that means winning some basketball games. That means competing more consistently in basketball games. Because the fact of the matter is, as impressive as the Magic's fourth quarter run was, as impressive and resilient and as resilient as the Magic looked and the way they flipped the whole tenor of the game, the fact of the matter is the Magic came out flat. The Magic put themselves in a deep hole again that they were constantly climbing out of. We have seen the story over and over and over and over and over again throughout the season. The Magic either, you, typically it's the Magic get off to a decent start with their starters. They break the lineup. The other team pounds them into the dirt. They're down 15, 16 points. The starters claw back a little bit, give it back up, and then it either becomes a 30-point game because they 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 let go of the rope um, or the other team is just particularly good or they fight back and make a 20-point game, a 12.1, and then the final score looks real nice. That's been this season. And so we've been in search of the 48-minute effort. We've been in search of a game where Orlando plays well for the entire game. I've often sat here and said that this Magic team is pretty good for 40 minutes. And those eight minutes are a huge difference. The fact of the matter is the Magic didn't show up in the first quarter in this game. And that deserves some questions. Uh, I, I think you got to give Jamal Mosley credit. I tweeted at the end of the first quarter that, you know, I know the season isn't about the team's record or the results, but Jamal Mosley needs to go Steve Clifford on these guys and hold them accountable. The effort is unacceptable. The Magic have, are playing with such a small margin for error. Denver, Denver did not play. Denver played well enough to win. Obviously, they, they deserved the win. But Denver kept leaving the door open for Orlando. 23 turnovers. Or Orlando did a good job forcing a lot of them. But the Magic are not a team that's always going to take advantage of these opportunities. And that's the difference between a good team and a bad team right now. Um, the Magic are still learning how to take advantage of these opportunities. And, you know, whether it was fatigue, coming from the long road trip, playing at altitude, um, or what whatnot, the Magic just couldn't hit any shots that would have changed momentum. Especially in that fourth quarter, Orlando got themselves back in the game. They got it down to eight and then just missed a wide open three or missed an open shot or, you know, had one bad rotation. The margin for error was just too small for them to complete the comeback. They were more than capable. And that's why I think we're raising the standard of, of what we're expecting from this team. I think that's why it's time to start saying, okay, y'all did this nice effort thing where the moral victory stuff, that's all well and good. But you got to start winning at some point. You got to start competing. You got to start giving yourself a real chance to win these games. And it can't be done if you're just sitting out the first quarter, if you're down 15 right off the bat. He had spotted another team 15 points. And the way the Magic spotted them points was really concerning. It, it, it's one thing if they're just missing shots. It's one thing um, if the other team's just really good. And Denver was really good in the first, first quarter. I'm not taking anything away from Denver. It's another thing if it's sloppy turnovers, if it's forced and rushed shots, if it's not getting back on defense, if it's you know not playing with the effort level that this team has to play with to give themselves any chance at a win. That's the truth of it. That's that's the fact of the matter for this team. There's a lot that this team has to do to find success and, and be successful overall. The Magic didn't do any of that in the first quarter. And so uh, they spent the entire game climbing uphill. And that's just not going to get it done. So as we raise the standard for this team, as we say, okay, we, we've seen that this team has potential. We see that this team has the ability to play well, the ability to compete, the ability to win games. You got to start holding them accountable to that and start saying, okay, we've seen these moral victories. We've seen all that. It's time to raise your, raise your level. It's time to expect a little bit more. I've been saying that since the, the win streak in January, the little, the little winning spurt the Magic had, that I think we're, we're past, we've moved out of that early rebuild phase, and now we're at a phase where, okay, you're not expecting to win every game but you're expecting to compete. You're expecting some level of consistency. And that's been the most frustrating part of the season is the Magic just, they haven't done much consistently besides, you know, play hard and, and be resilient and fight back. The things they did well in the fourth quarter, 
the pace that they played at, the defense that they played, the, the kind of peskiness that they played with, they got to play. I mean, it was born out of desperation. And Mosley stuck long and hard with a really interesting lineup of Suggs, Harris, Franz, Wendell, and Chuma. And it was a good lineup. Very smart lineup. They played really well together. And Mosley stuck with it far longer than I think anyone would have expected. They spearheaded this comeback completely and made this game inter more interesting than it should have been. But Orlando's got to do more than that. Orlando's got to be ready to play from the start. They got to have their identity set from the start. And again, we're not focused so much on wins and losses. We just want to see the team do something consistently. We'll talk a little bit about some of the funky lineups that Joel Mosley is trying out and the experimenting that he's doing, plus go through the box score uh, from Monday's game. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, football might be over for the season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, and where to, or to where to find the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to the Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today to, or use your mobile devices to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us. When you're done with us, though, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Get nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. The Atlanta Magic once again fall to the Denver Nuggets 121 to 111. They close this road trip out at 1 and 3. Of note, this is the final extended road trip of the season. For the rest of the season, again, this is why I've been big, 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 big on saying the post-All-Star break is going to be time to pick up some wins. Don't be angry about it. Um, the rest of the season, the Magic do not have a road trip longer than two games. There's, of course, some one-game road trips pocketed in there. There's a few two-game road trips. But the Magic are largely at home for the rest of the season. Um, again, expect Markel back. Expect Jonathan Isaac back at some point. After the All-Star break, the Magic have a three-game homestand. Um, the, the Magic are going to be very, very comfortable at the Amway Center. They're going to be able to build some momentum at the Amway Center. I am expecting them to pick up some wins. Like I said, I'm raising the level of expectation on them. But let's run through the final box score from, uh, from Monday's game. Let's start with Franz Wagner. 26 points, 8 for 16 shooting, 3 for 7 from deep, 7 for 8 from the foul line, 8 rebounds, 4 assists for him. Um, he was really good. Um, the Magic were kind of scuttling offensively uh, in the first quarter. They put the ball in his hands to start the second quarter, and the offense suddenly found some life. Um, I, I, I agree with the chorus of people who are asking, why isn't Franz getting more shots? Why isn't Franz getting more shots? The Magic do have to make it a point to keep Franz involved, whether that is turning him into point Franz, whether that is just running play specifically to get him the ball or put him in positions to score. Um, they got to make sure he keeps his shot up, shots up. 15 shots is plenty for him, is, is plenty um, for him to average. There needs to be games where he gets to 20 sometimes when he's really feeling it because he really changed the momentum of this game. He really gave the Magic a little bit of an offensive spark and kind of got them out of the funk that they were in in the first quarter when they lost 29 to 14. Um, that, again, that's the difference of the game. The Magic lose by 10. They lost the first quarter by 15. That's that's the difference in the game. They're, I, I cannot stress this enough. The Magic just did not come out with the level of intensity that they needed to play. And, and frankly, that needs to stop. That's that's my whole point here. Um, Franz is just really, really good. He's really, really smart. Obviously, he knows when to cut. It's, it's, it's easy to get him involved. It shouldn't take very much to make sure the ball is in his hands. And again, the more you do that, the more defenses will play those cuts and open things up for other players. So it's ultimately a good thing. Wendell Carter, 25 points, 12 for 22 shooting. 12 rebounds, 4 assists. I have to say, too, he did a good job on Nikola Jokic. Jokic really had to work for his shots. Um, Jokic did end up with 26 points, 10 for 26 shooting, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, but also 5 turnovers. It was a good battle between these two bigs, and obviously Jokic is going to look like he had the better end, but according to at least some metrics, this was one of Jokic's worst games of the year. Um, so he put up good counting stats, but the Magic, again, really made his life hard. I do think Wendell Carter deserves a lot of credit for that. 
Um, Wendell got going, especially in the second half, was able to find the basket and and really start to to pick up his play. Um, Wendell's been super impressive all year, so it's not too much of a surprise. Um, Jalen Suggs, 16 points, 5 for 15 shooting, 0 for 4 from deep, 6 for 6 from the foul line, 6 rebounds, 3 assists. He scores 10 of those 16 in the fourth quarter. Um, Suggs is big issue, and, and, and he'll have to continue to improve. Suggs has two big issues right now. Um, his finishing at the rim is inconsistent. He gets to the basket really well. Um, whenever he wants to get into the he can do it. It's just, can he stay on physical strength to, to do it consistently? And that's, that's kind of the big question for him. The other part is obviously he's got to become a better three point shooter. He's got to make open threes when they come to him. Um, but, but again, like you look at subs when he's in the open court, when it's like a scramble like that, and he's able to, to, to get to the basket um, with some speed behind him is impossible to stop. He is really good and makes really good decisions in the open court. Um, I, I think the thing with Suggs, you know, you know, teams want to speed him up and have him make quicker decisions. I honestly think Suggs' biggest issues come when he slows down, when he's given too much time to think about things. Um, yes, he gets stuck sometimes on drives. That's just going to improve uh, with spatial awareness and, and, and situational awareness. Um, but I, I've been really impressed with the way Suggs has played of late. Uh, again, it's just about adding out of 15 points, six for 12 shooting, six assists for him, four steals as well. Um, Harris is just really good. Um, you know, there's a reason why the man that now that he's passed the trade deadline, um, if Gary Harris wants to stay in Orlando, I, I think, I think signing him to a contract would make a ton of sense for this team. Um, I, I, I think, I think it, honestly, I think it would just, just, just flat out. I think it would make a ton of sense. Uh, for the Magic to re-sign Gary Harris, I, I would not be against it um, if that's the plan. But of course, we'll see about that. Some notable short-minute guys tonight. Mo Bamba played only 11 minutes, two points, one for four shooting. A lot of that just because the Nuggets play small. Bamba cannot match up with Nikola Jokic. He was just kind of out of place. Um, his defensive awareness has had some slip, slips of late. Um, I think that's a big reason why he has gone to the bench. Um, even though Chimo Kiki only made three of 10 shots, all three of them three-pointers um, for nine points, Chuma adds four steals. He's become a really good steal, steal guy, um, and his defense is a whole lot better. Um, for those fans calling for the Magic to start Chuma Okiki over Mo Bamba, I'm not against it. Um, I, I think that the Magic starting group has started to wane in its success. This game is certainly another uh, another data point on that. Um, and I do think the Magic need to start priming the lineup to bring Jonathan Isaac back at some point. So going with a stretch four instead of a too big lineup, I think is ultimately uh, going to be better. And again, Wendell Carter needed to guard Nikola Jokic all game long. Wendell Carter is a center. I know he's a bit undersized for center, um, and he's got a lot of improvement to make there, uh, but Wendell Carter is a center. I, I, I don't see his future at the four unless you get a, a really versatile uh, big that can actually defend a little bit more consistently than Mo Bamba can. Sorry, Sorry about that. Um, Cole Anthony played only 25 minutes in this game as well. Nine points, three for nine shooting, one for five from deep. Um, it, it's not that Cole Anthony played poorly, honestly. Um Obviously, the shooting efficiency isn't there. It's it's been kind of weaning. Um, like I said, I look at the assists. He only had one assist, so you know the ball wasn't you know the ball was in his hands, obviously. But he was playing more initiator than anything else. Um, his defense wasn't great. This just wasn't a good Cole Anthony game. Just just plain and simple. Um, the Magic went with guys that were more effective. Um, you know, again, it wasn't that Cole Anthony was bad. It was that uh, Jalen Suggs was a lot more effective. It was was making things happen. Um, you know, the Magic put out. That, that lineup and it was working. And so Jamal Mosley, to his credit, everyone's criticized kind of how he's managed rotations this season. He found a group that was working, that was playing with good energy in the fourth quarter. They were making a comeback. He stuck with them. He didn't, he didn't deviate. He, he, he played them out there a little bit longer. And, and I think uh, it, it was to their benefit and to their success. Um, the Magic shoot 44% from the floor, 11 for 39 from deep, the three-point shooting remaining a huge issue. If you're going to shoot 43 pointers, you probably need to make at least 13, 14 of them. So not, not, not a huge, you know, difference, but like the magic missed key shots. The magic settled for threes early um, and then missed key three pointers, key open three pointers 
um, later on in the game. So Orlando's got to continue to work to get open shots. I think it's a, this is definitely a process over results thing for Orlando. Um, as they as their young guys, especially improve their three point shooting, um, they will they will start hitting these threes. Um, they're getting good looks um, for the most part. Um, they just can't settle for them. Orlando does get to the line twenty three times for twenty free throws. Um, 15 turnovers for 17 points, 12 of those turnovers in the first half, turnovers and unforced errors, definitely a big factor in the early part of the game. Denver, like I said, led in scoring by Nikola Jokic, 26 points, 10 for 26 shooting, 15 rebounds, seven assists for him. Jeff Green, former Magic Man with 17 points. Uh, Will Barton, 17 points. Aaron Gordon with 10 points and five turnovers for the Nuggets. They get 16 points off the bench in form. So they shoot 47.7% from the floor, 16 for 40 from deep, a huge difference. Again, 16 to 11 on threes. That's five times three is 15, 10 point game. You know, okay, make, make another three there, and this game gets a whole lot interesting. Denver, though, does do its best to keep Orlando in the game. 23 turnovers, leading to 29 Orlando points. Orlando did a good job getting out in transition with 17 fast break points. Could have had a whole lot more. Magic just five for 15 on fast break opportunities. They actually outscore the Nuggets 50 to 40 in the paint as well. So again, some good things going on for the Magic, but again, just too deep of a hole to start. We'll talk a little bit about some funky lineups that Jamal Mosley's been trying uh, and some some ways that he is continuing to improve, continuing to, to change and shift this team coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our pals at Built Bar. This is the time of the year that I and probably you have pretty much given up on your New Year's resolutions. It's staring me in the face. I'm trying to get back on that horse, um, but get back on that horse, and I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to get back on it. I'm going to get back to my plan. And the way I'm going to do that, the way that's going to help me eat right while I'm doing that is with Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because you honestly enjoy eating Built Bars. Have you tried the Built Bar Puffs yet? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of the best tasting bars they have to offer. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar. They are a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors like yummy, cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. They're so good. They're going to be your new favorite too. All built bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, puffs included. So you get that chocolate taste, that savory taste that you all love. No low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bar with these. Replace your regular protein bar with these, and you will not regret it. Go to built.com and scroll down to the macro chart. You'll be blown away by the high protein, low calorie, high fiber, low carb offers they have. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and a few of and a new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. These are all the great flavors. These are some of the great flavors that they have. They're all delicious, and there's new flavors coming out all the time. So be sure to check out the website often. If you they think a flavor might be good. They'll make it, and it'll be delicious and good for you. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. You know, we all understand what this season is. But let's, let's not pretend. Let's not beat around the bush. We know what this season is. Um, we know... We know what to expect and, and, and what what will happen. Um, we know that the expectations are low. We know it's not about wins and losses. We know all that stuff. But it is still about the future. You can't play a season like this with pieces that matter and not think about the big picture, not think about how all those pieces fit together. If you're not thinking about how these pieces fit together, then you're not rebuilding correctly. Um, yes, you want to try things. Yes, you want to see what guys look like. You want to see... Who will rise to the top? But you got to be thinking about what is the ultimate vision of this team. That's why I've been a big proponent of saying one of the goals for the season is I want to see the outlines of who this team will be. I want to know, at least to some extent, what direction this group's going to go. And again, that's why I think it's important we see Jonathan Isaac and Markel Fultz before the end of the season. Uh, Even if it's 15 games, even if it's a quarter of the season, less than a quarter of the season, just give us a little bit of information on what we can expect and and how they might be used and and what they can provide. It's really, really important. So again, would not surprise me. Markel Fultz is back shortly after the All-Star break. It sounds like he's been really close for a while. There's just those final clearances he needs. Um, Wouldn't surprise me if Isaac's too far behind him. The the thing, though, is you got to be willing to experiment to get there. 
And you got to be willing to fail, honestly. This is a season where it's okay to fail. It's okay to, to make mistakes and to, to see things that don't work. Knowing what doesn't work is just as important as knowing what does work. So again, if the theory of the case is play your five best players, playing Mo Bamba at the beginning of the season was a great decision. Playing Mo Bamba alongside Wendell Carter, you know, seeing if that kind of a lineup would, could work because there's another lanky, wiry, seven-footer who can hit threes and block shots available in this year's draft, seeing if that makes sense with the core that you have makes some sense. And honestly, you know, without naming names, there's proof of concept there because the Magic starting lineup played so well together to say like, okay, if we if we draft Chet Holmgren, we've seen that we can make it work if Chet Holmgren's as good as Mo Bamba, which who knows? Who knows? That's the point of all of this. And so I, I, I think there's been some frustration. There's been some, some criticism of Jamal Mosley and his rotation decisions. There's certainly been some criticism about sticking with the two big lineup because I agree it, it hasn't been as successful as it looks um, it, as well as Wendell Carter and Mo Bamba have worked playing together. Um, and they've, they've had some really strong moments. That starting group is starting to wane a little bit. Um, it, I think it's, I think it's starting to come back down to earth some too. Um, it, it's starting to, we're starting to see that starting group struggle a little bit. Um, and that's, that's part of this equation too. That's part of what's going on as well. Um, what we've seen over the last few games though, is some of that experimentation with rotations and lineups. We've seen some tweaking here and there of late. We started seeing the Franz at center lineup come out. Um, at the beginning of the fourth quarter against the Phoenix Suns, the magic put out a lineup of Jalen Suggs, Gary Harris, Terrence Ross, Chuma Okiki, and Franz Wagner. We're starting to see the magic experiment a little bit with where they place Franz Wagner, whether it's at center or at point guard. And pretty soon again, I think the Magic do have to start pressing lineups with stretch force. It's not that they're giving up on Mo Bamba. Um, it's that that's part of what they want to be in the future. And, you know, I think Jonathan Isaac is certainly, at least for now, uh, uh, theoretically a part of that future. And you have to be kind of priming the lineup for his return. And of course, with Mo Wagner out, the Magic have been really shorthanded at center. When Marco Fultz comes back, we'll obviously see new, a new point guard rotation begin. Um, there's there's still a lot to, there's still a lot to sort through. There's still a lot that they can try and in different combinations they can try. Trying all these combinations, experimenting a little bit, whether it's matchup dependent, foul dependent, or just something they want to try, is important for this team. Because again, it's important to know what doesn't work as much as what does. And while the Magic would not try a Franz at center lineup for very, very long, it's had some effectiveness. Um, that lineup on Sunday, yes, or on Saturday, uh, yes, playing against uh, Phoenix's bench players was plus four. In a game you lose by 27, plus four is interesting. Um, they've had some interesting moments. They're, pos they're positive in the very short time that they played together all season. I think it's only like 10 minutes that that, that group has played together. It's something worth continuing to explore and continuing to find moments to play. And that's what part of the end of the season is about, too. It's finding different ways to use your guys. Exploring and challenging your players to, to do some different roles. To be a little bit more flexible. If there's a criticism of Steve Clifford, it was a perfectly fair criticism. It was that he was a bit inflexible with his rotations. He was a bit inflexible with his player roles. He was very determined that you understand your role, you stick to that one role. And in reality, you know, the team needed that structure and discipline. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to knock Steve Clifford for that. I think there's logic behind what he did. But at, at the same time, too, you need to be flexible. Because at the end of the day, the goal is get your five best players on the floor. Um, play your five best players as much as possible. Together, if you can, if, the, if it works. That gives you the best chance to win at the end of the day. And the Magic are showing a willingness to do that. A willingness to put some weird lineups out there to get their five best players. Just look at the lineup they had to close Monday's game. Jamal Mosley is not afraid to change things up. He's not. He's shown that he's not afraid to experiment a little bit. The only thing is make sure that experimenting has a purpose, has a goal, will help 
determine something for this team's future. Some note that they can take down and say, okay, this is something that we can try. This is a way that we can build. Because certainly, you know, some of the experimenting done in the early days of the Magic's previous rebuild, it didn't work. They stuck with it too long, and players got confused over what they were being asked to do. And that's not good either. There's definitely a balance about all this, but the Magic have shown a willingness to try something new and try different player roles with different play, different combinations and different situations. And we'll see how it all pays off in the end. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. You, of course, find us on Twitter at Locked On Magic. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Hit your tune in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places to podcasts to your podcast-enabled listening device. You can follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. And, of course, for the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at o. Magic Daily. That's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Now that you're done with us, go make your second listen to Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q, with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.